Hi Silverstone friends, it's Elizabeth Stone. Today I'm going to talk to you about getting things ready for your recipes. We're going to talk about sauteing onions, sauteing garlic, and sauteing mushrooms. I'm going to start with the mushrooms. I've got a clean skillet here. One of the things I love to use cast iron skillets. You don't have to use a cast iron skillet, but in this case, I'm going to. These are sliced mushrooms. These, these are just regular field mushrooms, but you can certainly use wild mushrooms, any kind of mushrooms. The thing about sauteing mushrooms is you want to start with a dry skillet. No water, no oil. And we're just going to put our mushrooms in. What most people don't realize about mushrooms is every mushroom is about 90% water. So what you want to do is we're going to cook these down and take most of the water out and then right at the end we're going to add a little olive oil and butter and a little seasoning and you will see they're going to be fabulous. So I'm going to put these on the stove and let these cook while we do the onions and the garlic. Okay, and I've just got this on a medium high and I'm just going to leave them alone. They don't need any more attention for a little bit. All right, now we're going to work on our onions and our garlic. So I've got a skillet here. And one of the things that I like to do when I'm sauteing is I like to use butter and olive oil. I love the flavor of butter and I always like to have it. But butter tends to get really hot and burn. So if you add a little bit of olive oil as well, it brings up the temperature, the heating temperature of your butter and you get a nice, lovely saute, but you still get that beautiful flavor. And the other thing, when you have a recipe that calls for onions and garlic, you always want to do the onions first. The onions have a lot more water in them than garlic, and so they take a lot longer to saute. So you're going to always start with the onions first. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this like this, and you probably remember from another video that we did how my, I cut my onions, but if you didn't see the video, you do three cuts or four cuts this way, and then you come down with your knife in this direction. So you've got these nice little cuts going through. And then when you cut the third time, you have perfect cubed diced onions, and this way you're not cutting the onion too many times, and it doesn't tend to make your eyes water as much. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just put these in. And you see how wet they are? That's all that water in that onion. So I'm going to go ahead and put these into the skillet and let those start to saute a little bit. I'm going to finish this up just with a rough chop here so we can add this to it. And when you're sauteing the onions, you're looking for the onions to become transparent. That's what you're looking for when they're nice and soft and they have started to clear. And you'll see here in the skillet in a minute, I'll show you. Now I've got this on a medium high heat and I don't want them to brown, but I just want them to become transparent. And the reason you do these first, like I said, is because they have a lot of water. So we want to cook some of that water out. And while that's cooking a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and work on my garlic. And the garlic will tend to burn if you leave it in there too long. And so I've got these garlic cloves here. And you just want to watch your onions so they're not getting too brown. We're going to stir them a little bit. And you can start to smell them. They're already becoming a little bit clear. And of course you never need nearly as much garlic as you do onion, but I tend to love garlic. So I add a lot of garlic to my recipes. I'm just going to give this a quick slice here. Okay, now if you look at these onions, you can see that they have become almost transparent. I'll hold this up so the camera can see that and see how they're very clear. They're not completely clear, but they're very pretty much clear. And then I'm going to turn my heat down before I put the garlic in there so that we don't burn the garlic. So now we've got a nice fire going here, and now I'm going to add my garlic. So those onions have been on about two minutes before I put my garlic in, and then we're going to lower the heat 
and let the garlic cook for another minute or two in with the onions and then you'll be all set to go. And while we're doing that, I'm going to go back here and check the mushrooms. Yeah, so one of the things is you put the mushrooms in the skillet and all of a sudden it's about half of the amount of mushrooms that you started with. And you are going to see here in a few minutes, it's going to turn into a lot less than that. Because when we get all that water out of these, that's when you get the full flavor of those mushrooms. All right, now our garlic and onion is perfect. It's nice and soft. You can smell the garlic, you can smell the onions. So now this is ready to go into your recipe, however you want it to go in, whatever recipe you're using that carves for garlic and onion. And it's just a beautiful mixture there. And you can do this ahead of time if you want to. You can do it an hour ahead or a little longer if you want to. And uh, put that in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. So now we're going to work on our mushrooms a little bit more. And, but we're still going to cook them because you'll see that there's still a whole lot of water in this skillet. So when you're cooking the mushrooms like this, that was a, a half pound of mushrooms that we started with. It's going to take about 10 to 12 minutes for them to completely get most of the moisture out of them. So we're going to let this go for just a minute and we'll be right back and we'll let's see what they look like. So remember when we started this whole bowl was full and now look at it. It's just not even a third of what it was. But that's what happens to mushrooms because they get very, very, all the water comes out of them. And then what you want to do right at the end is we're going to put another, you know, I like butter. So we have to put a little butter in, touch of olive oil. And then I'm just going to put a dash of this salt on there, just so there's a little bit of seasoning. And we're going to stir this up. So the key is to put this on afterwards. Sometimes my daddy used to like to put Worcestershire on them when they were done. If you're having a steak, that makes a really good topping for a steak. And then the best part, we're going to taste them, see what they taste like. Mmm. Those are really good, friends. So, friends, that is cooking made easy just for you. Remember to enjoy the experience and always have fun. Cheers. Until next time.